Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, friends. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Our special Beltane episode is here. I'm so excited. I'm going to tell you why I'm so excited. You're probably like, why is she so excited about Beltane? And before I get into all of that, um, number one, um, I'm testing. I just realized, you know me, I keep having to fuss with the audio of this podcast, and I have better equipment, but not ideal equipment. And I like to kind of be mobile. And so I have a new microphone, but I've been playing with the settings on my um, voice recorder program or app or whatever. And I think this might be a little bit better, but I just, I don't know. The last episode was like, not good enough for me. So anyway, know that I'm aware that there are sound differences and I'm working to make this like the best sound quality that I can with what I have to work with. So if you're new to the podcast, welcome. Welcome to our podcast family. We are here on this special, it's Beltane tomorrow. I'm recording this on Friday, April 30th. It's my mom's birthday. Well, it would have been her birthday. She passed a while back, but it's her anniversary of her birthday today. And of her passing, I think she like passed on her, like the day after her birthday. Anyway, totally regardless of what's going on here. But I think it's because the ancestors are coming in, right? So it's Beltane now, and it's um, Samhain in the Southern Hemisphere, which is all about Dia de los Muertos and the, you know, ancestors coming up and coming out and all that. If you're a returning listener to the podcast, welcome back to the family. I am so excited to do this episode. Excited for, I guess I'm excited for May. I am excited for May and I'll tell you why. But first, let's light our candle. Um, we are going to be um, just having a good celebration to ring in May, ring in Beltane, and ring in the opening of a brand new portal that I think you all will be very excited about. So I'm just lighting this crackling whiskey plus oak candle crackling wood wick. Maybe there's a little bit too much. I love these crackling wick candles, but the last time I got one, it was so funny because um, I guess my partner had never, didn't know what a crackling wood wick candle was. So he went to like open the candle and I walked into the room and I'm like, what, what is he, what are you doing? And he was like breaking off the wood wick. He's like, oh, what is this? This doesn't need to be here. I'm trying to find the wick of the candle. I'm like, that is the wick. Don't break it off. He was like breaking it all the way down to the wax. I was like, stop doing that. That was funny because this one, this wood wick candle has almost, it almost looks like a popsicle stick of wood um, coming out versus like some of them I've seen that are more like an actual look like a wick. This one is a very broad, like little wood strip. It's very nice. has a very nice little sound. So hopefully with this podcast sound setting, you have to lower your volume instead of raising it. I think I listened to the May energy update yesterday and I was like, man, I have to jam my volume like all the way up. Um, with this microphone and the settings were on, I don't know, I can't even get in all that, but I've adjusted them and I'm hoping that it's better now. As always on the podcast, you choose your listening experience. If you're new or just not sure what this is all about, if you've never been to a Beltane celebration before, you may just choose to sit back and watch and see what's going on. Use your psychic senses to feel into what's happening. And do you vibe with that? Do you vibe with our little podcast family tribe? Or you may want to take your listening experience an octave higher. Join me around the sacred Beltane fire as I wrap us all in love, light, and light love, calling in the spirit guides. 
who would like to join us in this sacred ceremony. And I'll share with you all of the fun guides that are going to be dancing around the Maypole and the Beltane fire with us. Got the big drum out today. We're gonna be doing some some stuff. I don't know. <laughs> we have to move it, move it way back, move the microphone way back for the big drum. So you can also choose to take your listening experience an octave higher. Call in your own spirit guides, totems, power animals. Wisdom keepers, angels, deities, whoever you work with, dragons, unicorns, there's a whole slew of guides, right, to join you around the fire circle in this episode. Invite in the guides who you want to, like, you know, kind of get seductive and sultry with. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you who's here in a little bit, but there's all sorts of fun guides. Like, if you don't have your own or you're like, I don't even know who my spirit guides are, then I have... Uh, a whole list of mine and many of them have stepped forward and said they want to come and hang out with us today so this is just supposed to be fun light-hearted so we can get out a little bit out of our you know this is this is the magical fun side of the podcast um, if you listen for a while you may be like well this girl always lives in her head um, and in a sense yes because the work that I do is a lot about channeling and um, energy work and talking to like heck I talk to my guides all day long so yeah if I need something right away before, before I go to a live person I go to my guides so yeah if I do that that's just the way it is that's the way it rolls here at TLC for the soul that doesn't mean I'm not grounded in reality but it just means you know that's the work that I do and that's what I like to do so Wow, this crackling wood wick candle is getting really crazy. All right, I'm going to tell you why I'm excited about this May 1st. So it is a new month. If you haven't heard the energy update, you can go back and listen to that. A lot of juicy details came in along with all of our spirit guides and everybody we're working with and the story and all that. Um, our spirit guide this month is the Lone Wolf, among others. We do have a few more coming in. All right. I don't want us to trance out too early. <laughs> Let's bring in some root chakra music. That music was really like trancing me out there. All right. Why I'm excited as the tripod falls over. Come on now. Come on. We can do this, people. We can do this, everybody. Okay. Why are we excited about this time period? It's because a portal has opened. Another portal. Not just the portal to a new month, but the portal to Lionsgate this year is now open. So everything that happens starting now or whenever you, it's not even when you listen to this, it is starting now. Um, so if you listen to this after May 1st or whatever, you're already in the portal, the Lionsgate portal. But this is a huge manifestation window that has opened for us. And of course, why not, right? We're in the middle of the um, solar time of the year. Uh, we're heading into, so we've got Beltane now, so we're about six weeks away from the summer solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and I've talked about dualities before with the weather, with the times of the year. And um, I think it's we're gonna still be feeling this sense of, I need to go within and enter the cave because in the Southern Hemisphere, they're moving towards the winter solstice. So. For me, I've noticed like sometimes in the summer, my quote unquote productivity like slows down somewhat. Like I want to siesta in the afternoons <laughs> instead of doing stuff and it gets very hot here, believe me. Um, Texas is not where I want to be for the rest of my life. It is so hot here in the summertime, but I have noticed the seasons changing somewhat. Um, so like we're gonna start May and we're still having cold weather. 
So, hey, if it could stay 65, 70 degrees all year long, I would absolutely love it. If it could be foggy in the mornings and cold and sunny in the afternoons, like 65, 70 degrees, that's my ideal. Like when I lived on the coast in California, that was my ideal. I'm going on a diatribe, but that was like my ideal weather is I lived on the coast. I was like, just the beach was right there in, so in SoCal. And I just opened my windows all year long and maybe one day, like when Santa Ana winds would blow in, I think the last year I lived there, one day in the summertime, I had to turn on my air conditioner because it got up to like 85 degrees. But other than that, I had the ocean winds. It was just perfect. And you guys, if you've listening for a while, you know I'm like an ocean baby. So landlocked is definitely not my style. All right, enough about me. Let's see. So I did bring some cards in. So I know I said no cards until the pick a card, which is going to be next week, beginning of the week. We're going to do the pick a card for the month. But before we get around the Beltane fire and just kind of trance out and dance out and all that, because the Maypole is about um, kind of setting some intentions for this time period coming up and wrapping, you know, everybody grabs a ribbon and kind of wraps your intentions around the maypole, which is really like a giant ace of wands for new beginnings, right? I wanna just get a sense of the overall themes for this. I'm just gonna call it Lionsgate Portal because I feel like we're starting it. Um, everything we do from here to there um, is like that. Once Lionsgate Portal kind of get, gets here, like all of your manifestation work should have been like done and Lionsgate's kind of like the reward period of time, <laughs> you know, receiving or having received all the blessings and Lionsgate, that's like you, you already got um, Lunessa um, August 1st and that's already kind of like the winding down time of the year here in the north, in the northern hemisphere. So we've got a big manifestation window. What is this? May, June, July. Three months. About three months of like, let's get it on, folks. Let's get it on. You want to manifest something? Now is the time to do it. You're supported by astrological alignments and transits. You're supported by the wheel of the year. Um, even if you're in the, in the southern hemisphere and it's solstice, like I feel like sometimes for me, I get most of my really good work done that time of year. But it's just like you have to fall in with your own rhythm of how you work. But just know that the wheel of the year, the um, astrological alignments and all of the portals that are coming in, the Stargate portals and all that are supporting us very strongly between now and 8-8. Eight, eight. So I wanted to bring in a few cards just to see like what does that mean for us? What can we expect and maybe each month we'll touch base on where we're at. So like this is May 1st, so like June 1st we'll touch base with where we're at going towards Lionsgate. Is there anything we have to um, adjust or do differently? And then same thing July 1st. So I have to make a note for myself not to forget. So I brought out a couple of decks. I've just got the, um, oh heck, you don't know what, a Modern Witch Tarot, I always forget. Uh, that you can make your own magic or whatever oracle deck <laughs> and my own hand-drawn deck um, the labyrinth of dragonshire and I just want to pull up a few cards to see what we can expect in terms of the energies that are surrounding us so I'm going to do um, I'm going to do a, a top row for collective messages for everything so like career finance purpose and then I'll do a little bottom row for our lovers, our romance reading. So I'm gonna just pull some cards out here and see what we've got. So give me the top row, what we can expect between now and Lionsgate. Oh, you gave me a whole slew of cards. All right, I guess we'll just take them. Let's just take them. And I'll draw from my deck. Whoops, I see it falling. You want me to take that one too? All right. And this other bigger deck. You make your own magic. All right, now let me do the lovers. What is that? Oh, of course. But you can always work your own magic. <laughs> Whatever. Of course. All right, hold on. And my deck. 
a little homemade deck. What do you want to show me? The bats. Okay. So everybody, here's what we got. Collective message. Three of Wands. Hmm. So we got the Three of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, the Four of Swords, and the Strength card, which the Strength card is kind of like our card for May. So what's this little story? I want to lay it out here because it always forms like a little story. This is collective. Let me move the lover's stuff over here. And then let me pull these cards. Dragon fire is here to help you. All is not as it seems. Illusions surround you. Wait. The new moon. <clears throat> You've earned all your stripes and paint the sun back into your sky. So we got the sun card and a lioness card. So collective message, you have been waiting, three of wands, you've been waiting for your ships to come in. And in this three of wands, there's like multiple ships and you're kind of standing above and they're out there and they actually look pretty close to shore, but you're still waiting. You're waiting for your 10 of pentacles moment and it's different for everybody, but 10 of pentacles is like bringing these manifestations down into the 3D world, right? It's the happy family. There's some little pets in the car. There's like somebody who looks in this particular deck, somebody that looks like a little aging like mother-in-law. You know, there's a really pretty house in the background. They look like they, they're doing okay financially. There's like a mom, I don't know if it's a mom and a dad, but it's like two people and a little kid. So you're kind of waiting for that moment. When is that coming? When are my ships coming in? And the guides and the source are saying, well, that's up to you entirely up to you in terms of calling it in so this ace of swords moment is like a new portal has opened a new month is starting and do you still really want all those things that you said you wanted maybe even a month ago because you can always change your mind you can change your mind at any time Every time we step through a new door, through a new portal, it's time to reassess and reevaluate. And it's a perfect time this month of May because we've got a Pluto retrograde and we've got a Mercury retrograde coming up. So it's time to assess and evaluate, like, do I still want all those things? And Four of Swords and the Strength card. I just feel like you're going to say, like, I am so tired of setting intentions and seeing, I hear like that I'm seeing nothing manifest and spirit is um, kind of shaking a little finger at you and going, okay, we know the journey has been hard. I can tell by this little card, it's called sun, paint the sun back into your sky. And we know that you just want to go out on the, to the beach and read a fairy tale and sit with the mermaids and dolphins and this is, she's on a beach, she's reading a book called Fairy Tales, and there's like a big, either like mermaid tail coming out of the water, or, you know, a lot of you want to get up and go somewhere too, and it's kind of like, I'm tired of doing the manifestation game, I just want to run away from it all for now, like, I just want to, I and that's what this Four of Swords, kind of like, I'm tired of, I'm, I keep hearing I'm tired of playing this game, I'm tired of waiting and I'm tired of wanting, and I just want to get on with my good stuff, and you keep, you, like, I keep hearing, like, you, we're like, somebody is saying this to spirit, like, you keep saying it's coming, but why am I waiting so long? <sighs> so, you're being asked with this strength card to have faith, what are the typical things we hear? Have faith, have hope, trust, that things are coming, restrictions are being lifted, especially for travel. I think people are really like, I want to take my summer vacation or I want to even take my winter vacation if you're in the south, southern hemisphere. I want to get away from it all. So it's interesting that the next two cards we have is Dragonfire is here to help you and all is not as it seems. Illusions surround you. Wait. So this was, um, there's a couple of reasons we don't want to just jump the gun right now on anything. Don't jump the gun and give up some of your manifestations. So go through what you want, 
figure out what you want. If you still want the same things, then just reaffirm and re-intend the same things when we go around the maypole here in a minute. Dragonfire is here to help you. So call in and Dragonfire came up in the May forecast. So fire dragons came in very specifically. Um, you can call in Thor's red, black, and gold dragons. They're very effective. You can call in your own fire dragon or we can ask for a fire dragon to come in for you in this fire circle. Okay. You don't want to you don't want to jump the gun just yet and like rush into anything because of these retrogrades. So for May, you're kind of just being asked to not take a step back and not do anything, but just like more information is going to be coming to you about what you want. So they're saying don't give up hope, don't give in to fear. Um I hear don't give in to hope, don't give up hope, don't get into fear. The sun is here. The sun is here. Hmm. That could be taken several different ways. And this new moon, every new moon is another big portal opportunity um, for things to get reaffirmed, for things to take flight. So they're saying that you have, <laughs> it's almost like they're just saying you just have to keep being patient with um some of the things that are happening in terms of divine timing. And I don't buy into the divine timing is all up to you thing. Like I do see sometimes people posting like, well, divine timing is, is all in your hands. And it's like, um, no, it's not. Um, it is not. You can sit there and you can affirm and intend all you want. But if any part of your manifestation involves another human being, be it a boss that has to approve your application or you know, say, yes, I'm hiring you or I'm firing you. Um, if it has to do at all with another person, then divine timing is not just up to you. So, um, you know, you can believe what you want to believe. You don't have to take it from me. Um, if this resonates with you, then, you know, it resonates with you. But divine timing is more than just you being in control of everything because if somebody else decides that they're not ready to hire you they're not ready to come into your life um they're not ready to do something then you know you have to wait you just have to wait so just a quick example they're showing me like when i was ready to move when i first moved back to texas from california in 2018 um we were living with um my sister-in-law for a while for like longer than I ever thought believe me um and they were very very helpful like who would who, what what people would normally take in like you know a husband and a wife a kid and two dogs and so my sister-in-law my brother-in-law um as much as we had like karmic debt that had to be repaid it was a very very challenging time being there um we were there almost a year um so they're almost like my you know I can't even, I don't know what to say there, but um, when it was, when spirit finally said, it's time for you to move, because I could have been like, okay, after about six months, I was like, I so want to be out of here. And it was like, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. Spirit was telling me it's not time yet. You have to hold on a little bit longer. And believe me, there are many more karmic lessons that had to be played out over the course of the next six months. Um, and it wasn't that I was there for karmic lessons and karmic debt, but divine timing was at play in terms of different things that were happening with other people in my life and then when it was finally time to go the go time for me to make a move spirit was like it's time for you to make a move and find a place to live and i could just feel it i could feel the change like it's time to do this and when i decided to do it when i was when i was told like okay it's here so i was like three of wands for a while waiting and when I was told it was finally time to do it, I made the move and I found some place the same day, exactly the same day. Everything just fell into place like dominoes. And when I came to where I'm living now, um, I remember the, the, the property office saying, you know, oh, you just showed up just in time. This person just moved out of this place. We're getting it all fixed up. It's going to be just like brand new. We think you're going to love it. And they brought they brought us to see it. And it was like the perfect location, the perfect space for me. Um, just everything about it was just like absolute perfect. Everything about the transaction went totally fine. So, you know, 
as much as I may have sat there and dug my heels in and wanted to move like six months earlier, it, it wouldn't have been the time yet. I wouldn't have found that space. Um, many things had to play out before that. Much healing had to occur. I'm telling you, healing had to occur between me and other people um, where I was at. And so as much as I didn't like it, I just had to like pull up my big girl pants basically and deal with it. Um, and I was divinely guided and supported the whole entire time. So this story is coming up for you for a reason to just, you know, just go easy on yourself. Do the best you can. Surround yourself with love. Talk to your guides as much as you can. They are there to support you 24-7. We are here on the podcast. You know, I know on a lot of these podcast platforms you can't comment, but um, we're over on YouTube. If you feel like you want to share comments and get into the, the, the vibe there, you can comment over on YouTube. You can send a message into the show. There's different ways to do that depending on the platform you're listening to. Or you can join me over on Instagram. We're like a little happy family over there um, at TLC for the Soul on my Instagram channel. And you can, you know, become part of the tribe over there too. Love reading. So this love reading. We don't have as many cards. And then we are going to think about our intentions. We're going to sit here and do a little quick meditation to think about our intentions. We're going to get around the maypole and we're going to invite in the guides. Okay, lovers, what do you get here? You've got the world card. You have forward motion from my deck. That's a that almost looks like that little gear I put on our thumbnail yesterday for the May energy update. So you have forward motion and it's got a little half a circle with a happy face. And then you've got three cards from the Make Your Own Magic deck. You've got lavender, surround yourself with love. And it's like a lady eating popcorn and she's got two other friends there and a little cat, and they're just kind of having like some friendship time. Doesn't look like love time. It looks like time with friends. And then and the next card is called Thorns. Weave together the crown you deserve. And again, it's a girl with a little girl and another girl. And they got tons of roses around them. And they're making like rose crowns. So it's not anybody with lovers. It's like a girl with some friends. And then the last card is Dragons. Slay them all which is a girl with a sword and it's a castle with dragons flying all over it. And this is always about your fears. So lovers, this is cycles being completed. This is regardless of whether you're in a relationship now, like you're in union, you're not, you know, you're in separation, you haven't met this person yet, um, but you feel them within and around you. You want to meet this one, this whoever you want to call them, label, <laughs> twin heart. Do you want to meet your twin heart, your chosen one? And again, it goes back to the divine timing, this world card. Big cycles are being completed in these union, these sacred couple relationships. And forward motion to me is always a good card. Forward motion is like good things are happening, good things are coming but you're being asked to, to not go into fear that things aren't going to happen for you all. Um, it could be, you know, as a sacred couple, you're trying to manifest something. Or if you have, if you're single, it could just be you're trying to manifest this person. And you're getting worried, even going back to the other reading, the general over, overall reading, is you're a little worried. You're a little bit wondering, like, do I even still want this person? Um, that's something to consider because maybe you've spent a lot of time and energy in this connection and you're not getting anything back in return. You're putting all your heart and soul into it. And you haven't even like heard from this person or if you've heard from them, you know, they're giving you some like lines and then aren't even the truth. And, um, you know, you're like kind of I've had that I, I like I've had it. And um what's that movie? Uh, it's like broadcast news or something where they're like, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to tell you anymore. So, you know, maybe you've just had enough of that. And you're like, you know what, universe, yeah, maybe this is my person. But maybe it's time to, like, call in other persons, too. And maybe I'll just have some other peeps. Maybe I get to choose from more than one person. You know, maybe I'll just take the person that is willing to, who really vibes with me and is willing to give me what I need and what I desire. Because I'm worth it. This should be what you're saying. You should be saying, like, I'm worth it. I deserve the best that life can offer and the world has like what seven billion people so yeah there may be this one out there that is my one 
and then maybe that one is working on themselves right now and who knows divine timing if they're ever going to show up for you or not like you don't know because they have free will choice and they can just decide that the connection is too much for them or whatever they're too scared they don't know how to deal with it who knows what people are thinking right you know well some of us do know what people are thinking um if you're telepathic you know what people are thinking but you can't control other people and you know how long do you want to wait do you want to wait a year two years and, and spirit has been showing you so i'm not just saying up and run so remember the original the reading right before this was kind of like don't do anything wait there's some illusions surrounding you so i'm not saying like jump up and run away like cut the cords and to toss this person out to the curb because it sounds like the situations are working themselves out but um you know you got to do something in the meantime so you know it is suggesting here like don't give up hope put your fears aside and you know just do you right now hang out with your friends um have some you know movie night invite your friends over or you know go do something fun with friends and weave together the crown you deserve hell you've been doing a lot of dang work on yourself and you deserve some you time and some fun time and if the person that you want to be with hasn't shown up yet to spend some time with you um because that's one of the reasons you want to be with these people so i get the whole thing like the love is overwhelming and then the relationships feel so powerful and i can't handle the i can't handle it because it feels like too much i feel like i'm gonna get washed away with emotion all right so pull yourself back from that perspective and just like this is just somebody you just want to spend some time with it doesn't have to be so complicated it doesn't have to always be like so analyzed down to the umpteenth degree of what this love relationship is is like in terms of how strongly you feel for the other person like you maybe just want somebody to spend time with like it doesn't have to be it, it can be powerful without being so powerful like we don't have to go down into the depths of it all and question every single nuance of it it's just somebody you you want to be with spirit has said like this is your person you want to spend time together you want to have fun you want to like you know go to the movies go on a picnic um it doesn't have to mean that right away you're going to meet this person and you're instantly going to like be attached to them side by side 24 7. i don't know i just think a lot of these relationships are but being overthought if that's the word overthought and um i think that those of you that are overthinking it need to pull back a heck of a whole lot and say like don't you you say you want a connection with someone you say you want you're ready to move into a loving relationship where the other person has definitely shown you love and compassion and all that so like just stop making so much of it um, what would happen if you just said, you know, F it all and just, yeah, I'm just going to go do this. Like, why do I have to overthink it so much? So I think there's a lot of overthinking, which came up in the May forecast too. And it's kind of like, come on now, people. I had to do the master co thing at some point and just be like, let's just pull ourselves out of this and let's just like get on with it. Like do it or don't do it. I don't know. It just got to like, I don't know. I do know but and believe me i am not judging because i've been there myself so i'm just saying like spirit is speaking through me channeling through me saying kind of like it's time folks to just you know i don't know <laughs> do do or die i don't know what the right word is so anyway for love there is a lot going on there's a lot of healing going on behind the scenes i'm not discounting healing i'm all for healing but at some point it's like, you know, just meet me by the Maypole and let's go, you know, run away for the weekend and hang out. And if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to connect with me, that's why I like, okay, I'm going to diatribe one more time. It's not really a diatribe. So when I say diatribe, um, you may feel like, oh, she's going off on a tangent. But all these stories, all these things I'm sharing with you, spirits channeling them in for some reason because once we go into sacred circle everything that comes out of my mouth for the most part like spirits not you know putting my personal opinion on things like i'll tell you that you'll you know it's my personal opinion but um the book lick by oh what is her name i don't know it's called lick and it's about this um rock musician and this girl who um 
they're like meant to be together, but they randomly, nothing's random, right? They meet randomly in Vegas. She's there for like her 21st birthday party or whatever. And he's there with his band, you know, his rock band doing, I don't remember what they're doing, but they meet and they have this really intense first connection. And there's this kind of like a drunken first connection. Like they go and they, they drink too much and they end up getting married in Vegas. Um, oh, I'm getting chills. So I'm supposed to tell this story for a reason. So they end up getting married in Vegas and they realize, and then when they come to their senses, so this was like the right way, when they come to their senses, they're like, oh my God, I shouldn't have married you. And what was I thinking? And I, um, the guy really likes the girl, but he's like, maybe she doesn't like me. And so he's like, files these divorce, divorce papers again, just like Twister from yesterday, files these divorce papers. And then she kind of is like, wait a minute, I don't know if I want to sign these divorce papers. Like maybe I really do like this guy. And so what they decide to do is spend the weekend together, um, just, you know, hanging out, getting to know each other, having fun and deciding like come Monday, do they really want to get divorced? And I haven't listened to the whole, but I'm listening to the audiobook. I haven't listened to the whole audiobook yet, but as the weekend rolls on more and more, she's like, I don't think I want to get divorced. And then he's like, I don't think I do either. So they realize, you know, yeah, all the intensity was there, but all they had to do was like come together, like the first move. And then it all fell into place. So just putting that out there for somebody. All right, friends. So let me just bring myself down a little bit. It's getting a little bit soapbox-ish. Woo, spirits, the Beltane fires are coming in. So here's what we want to do. To enter fully into this Lionsgate portal op door opening, I want you to take a deep breath. Let's just go within for a moment. And this podcast is not the end all be all for, for this, but just decide now that you're going to, in the next couple of days, like look through all your intentions that you've previously had out there and just come up with like, I just would come up with like a whole new list. Even if it's the same things, I would create a whole new list and I would say to spirit, these are my intentions um, moving forward between now and Lionsgate. This is what I would like to accomplish and be realistic about it. I mean, you know, if it's something that feels like between now and Lionsgate, like, no, maybe I, that's not all of that's not going to happen then what baby steps, like maybe there's some intervals to the manifestation and you could be like between now and Lionsgate, you know, at least want to be to this part of the journey of this overall manifestation. So we're going to affirm this together and I want to bring you with me either back to Avalon or some of us are still here. Some of us haven't left since like the last weekend we were asked to stay. So for those of you that want to just make sure you're still in Avalon or that you want to go there for the first time, see yourself in your room, stepping out through the door or climbing out through your window, meeting me, walking down, like walking down a little dirt path, you're going to meet me, the sacred grove. It's a grove of trees in Ravendale, my sacred space. Just meet me at the grove. Just hold the intention to meet me at the grove. So you're just walking down this little dirt path. And you're going to come to an opening. And you're going to see me waving amongst a beautiful old grove of some different trees. Kind of. There's going to be some woods to your right. There's going to be a river to your left and you're just following the path out into like an open area until you see a circle of trees with like a fire in the middle and I'm there I'm waving like come on let's go and you can enter the circle we're not going to be here for long we're going to gather here for a moment and then we're going to look to the left and we're going to see the barge waiting at the riverbank for us you're going to 
So this is a, big, a little bit of a bigger barge to fit all of us. You're going to step into the barge, into the boat. Oarsmen are waiting. So you all are still getting in. Okay, and they're saying we're ready to go. That's all. So the oarsmen are going to row us. Down, down, down the river. We're not going to the ocean. The ocean is down there. We're not going there yet. We're going to take a little side tributary. And then all of a sudden, the environment changes. The background changes. You see misty, foggy woods around what appears to be the opening to a lake. Up ahead, you see the mists shrouding the entrance to the sacred holy Isle of Avalon. As the barge gets closer, we part the gates, we part the mists. The mist part, the barge goes through. You turn around to look behind you and see the mists have closed back in again around our holy island. You see someone waiting on the shores, hooded figure with a staff in hand as the barge pulls up to the shoreline. You are helped out of the boat onto the shore as Merlin greets you all. The Lady of the Lake greets you. And you can see up to the right, a little bit off into the grass, the maypole and a giant pile of kindling looks like it's going to be for a huge bonfire that hasn't been lit yet you're going to follow me over to the maypole and you're going to affirm that you're ready for this new beginning this new road to Lionsgate 8-8 So we're going to just gather around the maypole and I'm going to share with you some of the guides that are here. We do have the lone wolf here. So these are all guides that are going to kind of dance around the maypole with us. Then we're going to light the bonfire and we're just going to have a few minutes of like sexy good fun time around the Beltane fires and you can come back to this whenever you want. But other guides that have wanted to join us, this is my list of guides. So I have a big list of guides um, that are energetically bound to me. Um, from spirit guide auctions that I went to like many years ago, like 35 or 40 guides. I can't remember. But the Earthen Vamp is here. He's really fun. Um, he comes to some of you when we do private sessions and he does shamanic work with me. But he brings earth and fire energy with him. Um, he has a mesmerizing dance that lulls you deep into a trance state. And there you'll find answers, gain strength, and be renewed. He is an ancient shamanic vampire who has many gifts to give if you are brave enough to journey with him. The mist vamp is here. He's more flowing water and airy feel, more like you're in a dream, but he helps you sharpen your powers of observation and cloak yourself so you don't stand out so much. He is different. Um, he is heightening, helping you to height, heighten your psychic awareness. Got a couple others. I just have to go find them. The Hawaiian gargoyle is here. He's a smoldering ancient Hawaiian entity with deep Huna magic and protection. He likes doing ritual. I feel like it's the dating game. He likes doing ritual work and will enhance any magic or rituals you do with him. He has a deep sexual energy and is quite handsome with deep skin, long black hair, and green eyes. He only shifts into gargoyle form to protect you while you are sleeping. I am. I hang out with him. Irish Mermaid, <laughs> the earthen bounce, like, no, you're hanging out with me. 
Irish mermaid. She is a sexy, dynamic mermaid who has beautiful flowing energy about her. She's fiery. She can hold both water and fire energy and will help you with these energies as well as help you with your first through third chakras. Strength, confidence, creative births, motivation, and sexual healing. She is connected with Hawaiian lava and fire energy. I have a Selkies here, loyal, playful, and loving, here to help you open your heart. They're also very sexual and will bring joy, clear away negative energy, and help you clear your chakras. And the last one is the Peruvian Merman. He's a mystical shamanic merman, helping with journey, meditation, and deep soul work. He's very proud, strong, and magical. All right. I also have a merfolk couple for Beltane that's coming in. So they're a merfolk couple. Um, new beginnings. They bring in new beginnings, love and confidence, and sexual healing. So if you feel like having a little three-way, <laughs> there they are. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. This is what happens around these Beltane fires. All right, so you're going to grab a ribbon of the maypole. I'm going to get my own drum going. I hope it's not too loud. Let me see if it, like, totally goes off the Richter scale. Okay, so we're going to dance around the maypole for a while. So we're going to enter this fun little portal. Oh. grab a ribbon from that maple and you know the maple is like a sexy little thing just like I don't know just wrap that ribbon see yourself going in circles dancing we're having fun now we've got all these guys here and you can call in your own guys if you have somebody you want to dance around around the Beltane fire and the maple and call them in now and let's do this wrap that ribbon around the maple and just dance like we're just having fun hey, 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 hey. Beltane fire and this maple in your dream state. I'm going to leave that fire burning um, and ask the guides to tend that fire through the night. So obviously this is a timeless episode. So if you come on this later, you can still take advantage of this. Oh, so anything can happen around the Beltane fire. And this is, of course, where my friend Pan comes in. And he always brings a lot of sexual energy with him. So if this makes you feel uncomfortable, like the whole sexual energy thing, just be sitting off to the side watching. You don't have to like do anything. Oh, maybe you're gonna meet somebody new in the Beltane fires. Maybe your chosen one, your one, comes out of the woods to meet you here at the fire. Maybe it's somebody you didn't expect. Maybe it's somebody new. Just said we're setting new intentions. So if you want to see what's out there, like maybe you feel like I'm ready to magnetize something to me, call in something new. Call in somebody new. Dirty dancing kind of moves. We just have fun. that you want to dance with. 
a good fun time around the Beltane fire. Thank you so much for joining me. If you don't want to stay around the fires, then the barge is waiting to take you back to your sacred space, to your place where you started. And you can just go and get in the barge and go home. Thank you for joining us. For those of you that are staying, we are going to be having more fun. So set the intention to meet with me and meet with whoever you want to meet with around the fires tonight in dream time. And we will see what happens. I will see you all again in the next episode. Take care. This episode has been brought to you by the Thunder Rose Ranch and Forest, a sacred place where the beings of light surrounding its etheric location are here to teach love to all humanity. We want to thank you so much for joining us. Take care.